If you want a place in society, you need to know your place in society. And it's not replace society with a gay society. And that's what it's become. Hey you, I'm Andy Powell. Welcome to the Allcast Podcast. No topic is off the table. I hope you enjoy. All right, Jerry, welcome. Hello, Andy. Thank thanks. You, thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Thanks for driving up. <clears throat> I uh, appreciate it. We got a lot to talk about. It's awesome. Thank you. Beautiful drive. Yeah. Beautiful day. October. Cool. Yeah. Clear. Yeah, it's beautiful out right now. Yeah. Yeah, I went for a, a dirt bike ride this morning mm. and that just... It's a good reset. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, awesome Arizona. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how do we start off a topic like this? There's all kinds of different directions I assume we'll go. But we got y- you are the founder of LGB Patriots. Correct. Arizona based. Okay. Our pride colors are red, white, and blue, not rainbow. And that separates us from every other gay group that's out there. You know, any group that's advocating for LGB civil rights, yeah. which basically we have already. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's what mm-hmm. I was going to ask. Mm-hmm. Why Why do you suppose they use the rainbow flag? Or like? Oh, I know why they use the rainbow. So um, dating myself, I you know, marched for gay civil rights in the late 1970s in London. And it was at the same time there was a, you know, rain, the Rainbow Warrior and Greenpeace and, you know, the anti-nuclear movement which had the the rainbow and it was stolen from them but i think it, to the significance of the rainbow for lgb goes back to judy garland and you know you know over the rainbow the song over the rainbow and i know that sounds completely crazy but i'll connect it for you because the week of the 1969 stonewall riots was the same week that judy garland died and for some reason, I don't quite understand this, but there's an awful lot of gay men who love show tunes. And Julie Garland was a goddess to them. And I mean, she sings beautifully. She was certainly a celebrity. And I think that they love the celebrity. Well, the week that she died was not a good week to piss off LGB. And the Stonewall Inn was a, you know, a hole in the wall. And the, it, the police constantly raided. The, the, the Stonewall Inn, they raided gay bars because it was illegal. You know, what you were doing, basically, you know, same-sex attracted, you, it was illegal. And uh, and it was, um, it was sort of, uh, it was sort of a habit, and I think it was sort of a hobby for New York police to do that. And this was the wrong night to do it. And, the, and you know, they one, the, the gay people there were depressed, and they had had enough of the raid, so that started the right. Now, I want to, you know, add in here a, a contrast here uh, and explain the, the Stonewall Inn because I, I watch a podcast or actually a video podcast of a, per, you know, right-wing person, pastor, explaining the, his perspective of the, the Stonewall riots. And I, I, I listen to lots of points of views, left, right, what have you, and I'm sort of fascinated by uh, you know, everyone's opinion. And he wanted people to understand that this was a mafia-run establishment, that the gay people were, you know, horrible homosexuals uh, in, in bed with, you know, a crime family, and they barricaded the police who were raiding inside and tried to set it on fire. And what they, what he left out was, first of all, the whole rainbow, Judy Garland, they were pissed off. But for a, any group, any particularly homosexual group, to want to start a, a bar or any business establishment and then go to a bank and say, by the way, you know, we have this idea for this wonderful group, uh, with a wonderful um, bar, except, you know, it's for an illegal group of people, uh, they're not going to give you a loan. Mm-hmm. And, and and if, you know, you, you're certainly not old enough, there was periods, 50s, 60s, where single women couldn't even get a mortgage. You know, I mean, I know a, of a retired headmistress in 
from the Peoria school district. And lesbian probably didn't, you know, acknowledge openly that she was lesbian, went to a bank with her, you know, background and a, a great credit and apply for a loan. And the first question, where's your husband? <laughs> it's like, well, don't have a husband. And she didn't get a loan and she had to fight for it. And so the the reason the mafia stepped in, first of all, they're very happy to exploit anyone and, you know, uh, overpriced, watered down drinks. And, and it you know, it was really honky tonk, uh, you know, hole in the wall bar. So that was the reason it wasn't they chose to, you know, be in bed with the mafia. Who the hell would want to be in bed with the mafia? So, you know, that, you know, and of course, as you know, that was the start of the whole, you know, gay, gay civil rights movement. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. And this is this was in New York. This is all happening. This was in uh, in Greenwich Village, in New York City. Yeah. Okay. So I I always assumed that the the rainbow flag that they had they had hijacked the rainbow because it contains all the colors. Interesting. And they wanted you know equality for all the different you know walks of life. I don't think so. I mean, you know, they, you know, they, in their sort of proud history and amended history was, you know, know, this gay person designed the flag. It was like, well, actually, Mama Nature designed the rainbow. Okay, you just usurped it. And then, you know, you know, it was supposed to be um, euphoric and, and, and wonderful and magical and all the rest of it. And of course, then, you know, it's sort of been corrupted and they've changed it. And of course, with the progress banner it's you know it's become sort yeah, of as weaponized it has been weaponized and quite frankly i you know it it is as triggering today as as the swastika interesting now is that for you triggering for you or for certain just some people somewhere it is triggering for me but i think for most people we you know we've been so saturated with everything rainbow and everything transgender or excuse me the rainbow progress flag it is that people are sick of it, you know, really yeah. just has been pushed on society constantly. Yeah, it's been really overwhelming the past few years, especially. Uh, why is that? Why is it so in our faces right now? Uh, because they have an agenda. They have an agenda to, um, you know, uh, to, to push it on everyone. And, I, you know, I think it try and understand, you know, when, you know, you comment, well, you have your civil rights. We do have our civil rights. And when I marched for gay civil rights in the late 1970s, we wanted a place in society. And the whole point, so 79, I think I marched in 78, 79 and, and 80. 79 was the, the 10-year anniversary of Stonewall. So that was a very significant uh, march. When, and, when you say a place in society, do you mean like recognition? Yes, e- you know, um, legal rights, equal legal rights. Okay, and you're yeah. referring to, because everybody has the same legal rights, and you're probably referring just to marriage. No, absolutely, what, so what, absolutely not. So you know, a, a being able to live in society free from discrimination, you know, gr- discrimination in housing, discrimination in you know banking loans, um, being able to go. And, you know, go to a restaurant and, you know, to, you know, a male couple sitting there and not be ostracized and not have someone say something, uh, being able to have, you know, our, our gay pubs and our gay clubs and not come outside as, you know, which, which I experienced in the late 1970s. And you had a whole group of, you know, uh, National Front Nazis waiting to beat and beat the crap out of you. Yeah. And then when you call them, you know, the police, they're not interested because you're the problem and you created the problem. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was it was a place in society. And the, the point of the marches was to show society that you knew a gay person. You probably did not know they were a gay person. So it was sort of Tinker Tailor Soldier Sailor we look just like you, okay? And it was. And those, when you look back... Tinker, uh, tater, soldier, sailor? It's an old Englishism. What does that mean? Well, it just, you know, it's it's everyone. You know, every trade, every sort of person out okay. there. You know, every, you know, just general society. Uh-huh. And uh, and I was in fact outed on national TV on that on that march by uh, a British documentary TV show called World in Action, and I actually found that video and it's it, it's sort of hysterical. It was sort of uh, you know a friend said to me, "Don't look now, you know you're on camera." And of course, exactly what you do is turn and look right into the camera, and 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 I did and uh, <laughs> went to work and thought, "Well, no one's going to see that." 
And, you know, no one said a word at work. And I was a computer operator at the time. And I was friendly with this very, very tall woman who wore sort of stiletto, thigh-high boots and, you know, eye makeup like an exotic butterfly. Very trendy girl. And she came up to me and she said, oh, I believe you're a star. And I'm like, oh, my God, what happened? Did someone say? She said they all saw it. So that was my out. I mean, there was no going back. But the, what is interesting about that documentary, it shows you how ordinary we were back then. I mean, first of all, it's the 70s. Everyone is very hairy. Uh, we're, you know, it's England. You know, they don't all look like they have access to hot water and soap. So it was, you know, <laughs> bell-bottom jeans and lots of khaki drag. Yeah. Um, and then there were the sprinkling of the drag queens, what we know as drag queens. But when you looked at them, they really looked more Mardi Gras, you know, with beads and that sort of stuff. But they were a fraction. The pride, a pride shame parades today it's almost as if we inverted it. Like now, a drag queen is a man who dresses like a woman and then dances like a woman. Do you right? want to? Do you want to? Uh, the, the honest answer. Yeah. Oh, well, the honest answer is the drag queens are the guys that couldn't get laid. So <laughs> that's but that's bottom line. I mean, they they were always the intention seekers. You know, you'd go to into a gay a uh, gay bar or a, a gay club, and you would always see them. You know, these are the guys that you know were. Um, either out of shape or, you know, excessively effeminate. And, you know, no gay guy wants to have intimacy with someone that, you know, has the the, the sexual uh, performance of a, of a wet fish or a dead fish. I mean, you just, that's, it's not a turn on for, for gay guys. And, you know, the dress up isn't. So, you know, how do you get attention if you're with your tribe, you're with your same sex? And they're not interested. Well, you get loud. You so get aggressive. So that's know? where the flamboyance comes yeah, from? Is... Excuse me. So, well, the, you know, England uh, always has um, a long history of um, female impersonations. So, you know, in you know, Australia with uh, Dame Edna and what have you. And they, you know, really very funny. And it was, you know, a, an obvious parody of women. So the working men's clubs in England, and we're talking about the coal miners, you know, the, the, the blue collar guys, all male would go to the clubs and you would have a female impersonator as, as entertainment. Now, there's nothing funnier than a masculine man in a bad frock. Yeah. And a hat and what have you. But these guys... It was were, different than drag, though. That were, Yes. It was but an I'm, impersonation. I'm going, I'm going back to origins, where this yeah. is coming from. So... Those guys would sit there. And first of all, this is not a happy audience. You know, this is not your, your crowd. And really, the the performance was about the awkward dynamic between straight men and straight women. And they would play that up. But, you know, those same guys, if on the street thought you were gay, they'd beat you up. But they, you know, they would heckle the, the you know, the impersonator and whatever. But these guys could give it back because they were comedians and they were funny. Nowadays, the drag guys, you know, lip sync to a pop song and call themselves talented. And I'm like, it's not a talent. You're just a show off in a bad dress, you know, too much makeup. And, you know, and somebody who just up. wants attention. It's someone who just wants attention. Yeah. And, you know, the truth of it with the drag, they, we were done by the 1990s. I mean, it just died out. No one's interested. And, of course, Rule Paul with his drag race came along and kind of, you know, pulled it up. And then, of course, I think a lot of it is being sponsored by straight allies, by, you know, a lot of gay people, uh, straight people watching that thing. You know, this is great. This is fun. So you marched in, you said the 70s? Late 70s. For what? We, equality. For G gay, gay equality? Gay equality, which, okay. which we have attained. Yeah. We did not march for gay marriage. Then even even came up. Okay. It was just... You wanted to stop getting beat up, and you wanted we, to be able to have these clubs and these. You wanted to be. We wanted a free. We wanted a, a place in society, and, and you know, my my saying is, if you want a place in society, you need to know your place in society, and it's not replace society with a gay society, and that's what it's become. And it was never that. It was like we want to be left alone. We want to be able to date. We wanted to, you know, have the things that we have, like we, you know, with. Social media, where you know, dating websites, you know, gay bars, gay restaurants, what have you, and not go into as with the the headmistress and go, well, I'm, 
you know, I'm a single woman and I want a mortgage. Well, nowadays, you, with fair, you know, fair housing, equal housing, you wouldn't dare turn down a person. Back then, it was like, well, where's your husband? Your husband you know, needs to make this decision for you. I mean, that's the world we lived in. Well, we're on the brink of being turned, all the straight white males being turned down. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. Yeah. So in 50 yeah. years, since you marched in the 70s for equality, where are we at now with that? You get you guys being the gay community have all that equality and all, yes. except maybe gay marriage in every state, right? That's yes. And what's the progress been like? Right. So I, before I even get into the whole gay marriage thing, because I'm I'm not on board with you know what the majority of the LGBTQEIEIO are with gay, gay, gay <laughs> Thank marriage. Thank you. I'm glad you said it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know the the. Equality. Um, lost my train of thought. There. What was what was the question again? What's the progress been like since the seventies? So, uh, so the the progress is that we we have equality. You know, we have a place in society. But I th- the thing to understand about this, you know, if you are human rights campaign, if you are GLAD, if you are ACLU, if you are any of the NGOs, the charities who have been sponsoring gay civil rights. When you've won, go home. And they're not going to go home. They need DC salaries to fund. They, you know, it's a constant victim violence. If you cannot find a another point of grievance, then you go home. And then, you know, long came the gender ideology and trans, and you know, we they've included that into a a same sex sexuality. It has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Now all of a sudden we're LGBTQEIO and it's you know it's so you know it's a we won, go home and they cannot. And you know with when you talk to the 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 the, the gay divorcees, the, the gay people are like, you know what, I don't want to have anything to do with it. They will say, well once we got gay marriage, what what more is you know, going on. And on, on the gay marriage, you know, I'm, it, to me, uh, gay ma- you know, marriage is a religious, you know, institution. So yeah. if you are religious, then you abide by that re- religion's rules and dictates. And if they say same sex, you know, we're not going to recognize it, then they don't recognize it. You know, what we wanted was legal civil rights. We wanted the yeah. equality, the tax benefits right. that, that, that and marriage that's where it starts. that's where it starts to get real squirrely is because mm-hmm. allegedly you have separation of church and state. But yeah, all of a sudden, exactly. you need the government to get involved if you're going to get married, and mm-hmm. you need to submit a form to the government for approval, and you get tax benefits for being married. That doesn't sound like the separation of church and state to me. Maybe yeah. that's not what that phrase meant initially when it came about. But what, what you guys would advocate for is that you want those same tax breaks if you have a life partner, too. Exactly. Right. Okay, exactly. I get that. Yeah, I mean, that, the famous Supreme Court decision was exactly about that. But it, I, you, you right away uh, write about how, where we've come. I mean, literally, the bullied have become the bullies. Yeah. And, you know, well, you want to hold a mirror up and go... Of. You know, the, you know, you are advocating for all the things and your behavior and your violence is everything that we marched against. I'm going to say kind of uh, the, the bullied have become the bullies. Mm-hmm. And that's I only say kind of because this alphabet soup mental health group, LGBTQIA plus <laughs> whatever the whatever the hell that is that I'm not going to I don't respect it. Um, Good. But whatever that small group is with a huge microphone those that small group of people doesn't represent most gay people, most bisexual, most lesbian people in the country. Sadly, they probably do. Yes. So ah. for, for first of all, understand, according to USA 2020 census, we are LGB or 5.6 percent of society. okay? So the 94.4 percent, voted for our civil rights and voted for gay marriage and you have this tiny percentage and it's you know it's probably the majority of the 5.6 who have you know who live on the rainbow plantation who drink the rainbow kool-aid who read the rain from the rainbow script who are on board with this you so you think the vast majority of lesbian gay bisexual people are on board with what's happening yes in in the world stage right now regarding yes. I- including the drag shows for kids the genital mutilation yes. 
You think most most I of them absolutely are absolutely do. I completely thought you were coming from a different direction. Well, I am coming from a different direction. You know, I'm the sort of the, the lone stubborn voice that's yelling at the mountain, and the mountain's not listening. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, 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 yeah, Andy, appreciate that first of all, uh, and this this is true of both the left and the right. You know, we're in these bubbles, and you know, because we only talk to ourselves and we only listen to ourselves. So if you are a gay person. And, you know, if you are old enough to come through, the, you know, the discrimination and, and, and the harshness of what have you, then the, the rainbow plantation is your, is your tribe. This is your village. These are your people. And there are what I call vocational homosexuals who that absolutely are saturated in this. You know, they only want to work for a gay business. They only want to, you know, socialize with gay people. So... If you, you know, who's going to be, and of course, uh, that's me, I'm describing me because I'm, you know, contrary and stubborn and obtuse, the only one saying, I don't think this is right. I don't think you should be doing that. And most of them will look at you and they're not critically thinking. They, they're not originally thinking and they're not thinking out of the box. So when you say something that's against the rainbow script, they come at you. Do you think that a lot of those people um, are just happy to receive representation on such a large scale, regardless of the quality of how they're being represented? No, they're not happy. They're miserable. They're absolutely miserable. I mean, how could you be happy when you're a constant victim? I mean, that's how they seem to. I mean, you know, when I testified at, at Camp Verde, and, uh, and thankfully, and this was against, you know, inappropriate books for children and whether they should be moved to a different parts, not book banning, moved to a different part of the library. And, you know, here's this lesbian who came up to speech and on her chest, she has tattoos of playing cards. So she's got, you know, the ace and the club and what have you. And they're all in rainbow transgender colors right at the top of her chest. And she's whining about she doesn't feel safe. And I'm like, well, <laughs> you've entered society as a victim. You know, you're your, you know, avant-garde banner is right there on your chest. So, you know, when you go to society, what they see is someone who, you know, has an agenda, someone who has a politics that she's prepared to have permanently etched onto her skin. And it, you know, and, and her point was, I don't feel safe. It's your problem. Well, it's yeah. you don't have the right. You uh, don't have the right to do that. I mean, why should majority society be concerned about your feelings? I agree. Yeah. I don't think they should. Yep. And along those same lines, I don't think that anybody should be forced to use more made-up words that are not a normal part of the English language mm -hmm. we use. Mm -hmm. So when you start to change... When you force change on someone's languaging, it it changes the mindset around things, and that's a very dangerous slope. Yeah, and it's very true. And I think about uh, my red pilling, and you know, I U.S. citizen in two thousand, I voted green. And that was Rolf Nader, because he has Rolf Nader, who has always advocated for consumers, and he's in the back room, you know, working hard for consumers, working hard for his constituents. And he has the, you know, the, the Clinton Gores and the red carpet, and he has the Bushes and the Cheneys on their red carpet, and, you know, Volga, you know, sort of the, the Marie Antoinette's of, of politics. I voted for him. I thought Gore was a bore. Um, I have voted libertarian, I voted Democrat, and finally voting Republican. But the reason that I couldn't stand the, I think it's the old GOP, and it's not the current GOP or fractions of the current GOP, where they were so authoritarian, you know, you couldn't say this, and you couldn't use this language. And uh, by the way, you know, you, there's no s sex before marriage. And by the way, we're not giving you marriage. And it's like, where the hell did that leave you? And now, all these years later, the left are doing exactly the same, you know, compel, yeah. compel pronouns. And you have to say this and you have to affirm me. And, and or suddenly, you know, uh, my fabricated gender and my fabricated sexuality is your responsibility. And yeah. I'm like, no, you're, 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 you're a fascist. It's like, how is yeah. it you cannot see yeah, that you become your enemy? Exactly. No. Even though they're spouting no. off that anybody that doesn't agree with them is a fascist, which is obviously bullshit. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, do you know um, George Takai? He was the actor on Star Wars, original Star Wars. Who? What he's, character did he play? Oh God, he, he's, <laughs> he's the Asian guy that was on, you know, the, you know, on, on the bridge. Oh, okay. With you know, Lieutenant Huru and Spock and all the rest of them. You know, he's the B. Wait, do you mean Star Trek? So what did I say? You said Star Wars. Sorry, Star Trek. Okay. Yeah, original Star Trek. Okay, yeah, yeah I know the guy you're and, talking you know, about. And he's just this miserable, um, rainbow brainwashed person. And for some, I don't follow him on Twitter, but for some reason, the algorithm sent me this. And, you know, he was made this comment about, you know, uh, all accusing the Republicans of being all the things that the Democrats are. You know, you're fascist. You're that, and, you know, and, I retweeted and I quote tweet so that he can't delete it. And I'm like, you know, it's, I, I'm in a, a half mind to just mute you. But it's fascinating to me how, you know, a, you know, the rainbow rabbit hole that you sunk into, that you honestly, you have this myopic rainbow jaundice lens <laughs> on the world. And it's like, can you, yeah. did you read back? What you just tweeted, and he just, and, and I think, you know, you comment about the majority. I honestly think the majority are I still reside on the Rainbow Plantation. Mm. I will say to you that with both LGB Patriots Facebook group, and, and we're nonpartisan, and we're, you know, the LGB gives us the voice to speak for LGB Patriot for, you know, national issues. But I have two other groups. One is the Victorious um, Conservative, Gay Conservatives, and the other one I think is, um, you know, just uh, le- Gay and Lesbian Conservatives. And the, and they are everything. They, they'll have everything in there. The, there are tons of what I call everyday gays yeah. who are moving towards this. And, I'm you know, I, we're not General Motors uh, size-wise, we have membership from, you know, um, Vienna, Austria, all the way through to, you know, Spokane, Washington. So it's very broad, which is the red, white, and blue, because there's lots of, you know, Western countries that are red, white, and blue that are given, you know, gay people their equal rights. But I had, you know, th- this is a typical example. I have uh, Joanne who joined our group, and Joanne is, you know, lesbian. She's just a very ordinary lesbian, married, upstate New York. And she messaged me, and she said, you know, it's okay for you gay guys. She said, but for us lesbians, we're all being pressured to transition. And she said, most of my friends have turned to alcohol. It's like, how was that gay liberation? So who's who's pressuring the everyday the, gay to you, change their gender? Well, you know, the, uh, I'm trying to sort of explain the where this is coming from. Yeah. And so, and, oops, um, my, you know, this is my my French grandmother's hands flying <laughs> about. Um, you know, and uh, the, I uh, I have a presentation that I've yet to give, and it's called Rainbow Pride is Poison, subtitle, They're Coming for Your Kids. What are you going to do about it? They are coming for our kids. And the reason that uh, I put it together, because I was invited to speak at Area 4, Yavapai County, GOP. And I spent, you know, it was planned months of ours. I spent weeks working on this, 20 minutes PowerPoint presentation to explain where the origins of this and how to fight it arm you with that it never happened because the person who organized it got very nervous and first of all she well, wouldn't say who was going to be the speaker i was mm. going to be surprised and it would have been a surprise wouldn't say that it was a, a homosexual topic which mm-hmm. you know it, it is and it isn't and in the end it was whittled down to you can only have 10 minutes and six slides and i'm like you know what i'm not going to waste my time now the other county gop executive committee were, wanted me not to cancel. They really wanted me to turn up, and I didn't. And I, I, I should have gone because it would have been an opportunity to walk into that room and introduce myself and show them that, you know, this homosexual doesn't have two horns in his head and a forked tail. And I think a lot of people did. Well, it turned out in my absence that it was a shit show. There was, you know, lots of, you know, angry conversation. There were five precinct captains who resigned because, you know, a certain part of the other part GOP are inviting a, you know, a practicing homosexual. Well, first of all, at 67, I don't need to practice anymore. But, you know, a, <laughs> a, you know, a known homosexual. And I'm like, 
And, you know, and then, uh, you know, what's interesting was when I first uh, met Lucy Rayner Wheat, who was, you know, first vice um, uh, Chair, first vice chair of the other by executive committee and she is you know my partner in political crime uh it was i came up to prescott to, to help with fighting an all ages drag show and i walked in with you know lgb patriots and there was a group and there was a, a pastor a church pastor there and he thought it was let's go brandon patriots and then when I, you know, they thought, great T-shirt, until I, you know, explained what it was, and then they sort of, you know, fled. <laughs> but it turned out, you know, all, all these, you know, uh, years later, he was there, and he was standing up for me and saying he has a point of view. And the, the fundamental Christians, and I have to say, I understand where they're coming from because the ammunition that the LGBTQEIEL people are giving them, why on earth would you not be frightened with, you know, the gay shame parades and we're coming for your children chants and all the rest of it? So I understand it. But I just, you know, as an atheist, I don't see it in b- biblical terms. And their point was, what does this, uh, you know, gay person, LGB person uh, have that, and what information is, can he bring that, we don't, we can't access ourselves. And, you know, what I, I miss the opportunity to be able to say to them, like, understand something. When you criticize the rainbow agenda, you are painted as a Christian nationalist. This is a new term. A, you know, a hard right Republican, you know, or just, you know, Republican. You know, you're a nasty homo hater. When I speak up with my gay you know, provenance going back, you know, marching for civil rights in the 1970s. What are they going to say? They have nothing to say because I'm on that, or was on that platform, speaking out against them. So I, I do, and I guarantee you, those people are not getting up at 5.30 as I do every day. I'm single, selfish. I don't have, you know, a partner. I don't even have a freaking cat or a dog. My life is my life. And I will have a two and a half hour breakfast. I read uh, the Flipboard app. Um, I, you know, so I'm looking at, you know, uh, you know, the, the news from the Far East to the Far, you know, the, you know, the Far West. And, um, you know, I get sent a lot of uh, gay press because, you know, as part of the Flipboard app, there is a section, the tile that's for you. So the algorithm is sending you things. And of course, I'm sharing the gay, uh, you know, press constantly. And I think the algorithm thinks, oh, well, that must be approval or support it isn't that you know i'm being very critical Mm -hmm. but i see it so those people are not reading you know query and gay times and 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 pink news and uh, the advocate magazine and what have you i am i'm reading that so you're not and and quite frankly if you know one of the things they said you know uh, we went on to his platform page and we counted the word sex 21 times and i'm like you know not a steal a, a line from ben shapiro on boy scouts it's in the title homosexual it's like you know it isn't pr- you know it's not a promo for the homo it's not promoting <laughs> sex it's like it is what we are we are same sex that's our agenda and if you really stepped out of your little jaundiced you know fundamentalist religious I, you would read, that's an actually a very great platform and it's better than any other group out there. It's better than Log Cabin Republicans. It's better than uh, so LGB Alliance. Where's, so where's the line? For you, for you being a gay man that you say homosexual, it's our agenda. So having that be an agenda, like where's the line for teaching one's children what is and what isn't okay? And because you're obviously speaking out at local places against having pornographic type books being accessible for children in our area. It's not a homosexual agenda. The left has a homosexual agenda. And it's actually not even homosexual because homosexuals are no longer trendy. LGB are no longer trendy. Okay, so you were referring to the title of an article or a homepage? 
I'm, I'm talking about our website platform page. Uh-huh. So it, we lay out exactly who we are. We're a patriots. We, we don't support the rainbow flag. We're, you know, we are swear allegiance to the countries that have given us our civil rights. We have a, you know, a, a section on the hot topics, abortion. But we don't make babies with our intimacy. So why would we have a, a, a position on that? I and, see. You know, you know, we get sucked in by the left, like they're coming for abortion. Now they're coming for LGBT rights. No, they're not. That's the first time I've ever heard heard anybody say that that is lesbian gay or bisexual is that hey we're not having kids so we don't have a voice over the children i will tell you if i get really frustrated by not uh, making as much progress and i'm into my sixth year when i see everyday gays um, on social media who will say you know what i never thought of it like that um, then I know it's worth it. And, I, you know, thinking off the rainbow script. And the other thing is gay marriage. And, you know, it's a religious thing. So, and, you know, when people ask me about gay marriage, I'm like, buy it, beware. It's one of the most, marriage is one of the most failed institutions. And in Arizona, it's a community property state. So you, do you really want to think about that? And, you know, I, I think a lot, for a lot of gay men, it's uh, not so much about love. It's about falling in lust. And then you will say, well, you know, and even gay, you know, everyday gays on social media will criticize them like, well, have an open relationship. That's not a marriage. OK, mm-hmm. you're just, you know, horny F's and, you know, and, and you want to play. So what was the point? Why didn't you just get a civil union? You know, go down to the, you know, the city hall and can get a certificate and all the rest of it. But, so you're not honoring the institution of marriage. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they're trying to bend the definition yeah. of something to fit their narrative and so, what they want. I, you know, I think it's a it's it, it's a jealousy, and I think it, hmm. uh, some of it, it's an anger, and it's a constant anger. And there's even a book uh, uh, called the the velvet uh, um, the velvet rage, and about gay men who are and you and you watch them and you watch the 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 people who reside on the rainbow plantation how quick they get angry and get hysterical um, is. You know, you're if you believe you're born into this, so you know, you got dealt a, a shitty hand in poker, and you know, you're, you're you're first of all, we've gone through you know, centuries of being a mental illness, or first of all, not even being acknowledged, and then being a mental illness, and then you know, being illegal until you know, quite frankly, quite recently. So why wouldn't you be pissed off, you know, because you look at the rest of society, your family, you know, your relatives, you know, the people they associate with, you know, your work people, they're out there, you know, man meets woman, your boy meets girl. Do you think that uh, a lot of these angry gays are carrying the weight of history on their shoulders and that factors into the anger? You know, I think they, they regurgitate it like a bad pickle. Like it's like... Everything's fine. You know, we're, you know, you are the most privileged people to live in the West. Yeah, it's like... Just go and enjoy it. And it's like, so why, you know, when you keep, you know, um, poking the wound and not letting it heal, it's like, well, yeah. why, you know, just go off and, and, and be happy and just, you know, and, and enjoy what, you know, what we have. You are so lucky to be living in 2023. You're so lucky to be well, living it makes in the me, West. It makes me think of the, the thing about... Um, reparations for for black people and Mm -hmm. are there gay groups that are asking for reparations for things that have happened in history (laughs) because first of all it's i I want to pay off my mortgage by the way (laughs) i think both of them are ridiculous now of course they're ridiculous i'm a straight white male say whatever you want i don't care but it's ridiculous because you have these people that are demanding that somebody pay them for something that happened to someone other than them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's I mean, so it, stupid. You know, I, I, I'll give you a, a, a little side story. So I had friends from Africa who spent many years in Montgomery, Alabama. So every Thanksgiving, I would fly down there. So, you know, I lived in New York City for 10 years. So New York to, I think it was Nashville was the hub, American Airlines, and then this little puddle jumper to Montgomery. And when I got on uh, the little puddle jumper, it's a big puddle. It, yeah, no, 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 excuse me, a big jump. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is a big jump. And I think this was like a turboprop, so two seats, two seats. Mm. And the, uh, my assigned seat was next to the shriveled up uh, little black lady. And as soon as I sat down, she grabbed my hand and was like, "I have flown for the first time Pittsburgh to you know by, to um, Nashville," and it was just the most horrendous 
turbulence. And now I'm put in this tiny little plane and I'm holding your hand until we get to Montgomery, whether you like <laughs> it or not. So, you know, so we became, you know, fast friends. I had, no, you know, no choice. And she was, you know, going on about this, you know, incredible American holiday, Thanksgiving. And she was telling me how she had been cheated from her African heritage. And, you know, Hmm. I was born and raised in Africa. So Hmm. I'm listening to this and I'm like, well, what do you think you were cheated out of? Well, you know, all the traditions. And I was like, okay, well, let me explain to you some of the traditions. You know, having uh, birth twins. So you take them on a mountain, you leave them for the animals to eat because it's bad voodoo, okay? You have someone who wants to put a, a spell on someone that's aggrieved them. So you go to the local witch doctor and he comes up with a potion. And that potion may include the male genitals of a baby that he's going to grind up. So you go and murder. That's what you missed out on. I mean, whether you are, you know, your your family's, how they, they, you know, their journey to America was evil. And, you know, what they end, ended up having to endure you you know you won the life lotto because all your children are born in the greatest country in the in on earth yeah, so but you, you, you know can't, you can't see that you've won that lottery unless you have perspective on what the other side looks it, like you know you can't see it because you have the democratic party who are incredibly racist and let me explain that to you so the democrats you know elitist white liberals decided that you know the a war on poverty where we think so poorly of black Americans, we cannot uh, conceive that you could survive, let alone thrive, in the greatest country on the earth without the financial patronage of a of elitist white liberals. And I'm like, yeah. you know, what you did was take away their incentive. You you know, you turned them into a little socialist or communist. Yeah. You know, serf. So you enslaved them. And I think for a lot of with the the gay um, pandering from the straight allies, they doing the same. You know, you know, you're a victim. I'm like, you know what? We're not victims. You know, stop treating us like slow children. We're in society. We're enjoying ourselves. You know, we have our own, you know, sense of humor. We have our own bitchy humor. You know, we have our own, you know, creativity and all the rest of it. Leave us the f alone. Yeah. And but they cannot because because it's you know all part of part of their agenda. Well, yeah, because they they need you guys. Mm-hmm. They need to be able to step on you guys to achieve what yeah, they want I mean, politically. You know, it's it's like we've become as marketable as you know, laundry detergent. It's like you know, wash with o- wash your whites with Omo and wash your colors with rainbow. You know, yeah. and it's like you know, and when you see with you know with uh, Bud Light and all the rest of it, it it's like you know f off you mm-hmm. know where we you know we, you're exploiting us and and we can see it but you know uh, if there is a benefit for the rainbow plantation dwellers they're going to go along with it and the same thing with you know unwed you know black uh, mothers you know if i have keep making more babies and i keep the male and you sire out of the home i'm going to get more benefits so why wouldn't you and then, of course, you you know you see the consequences of crime and the ghetto life they live in, and it's you know it's just, it perpetuates it that perpetuated victim mentality. Circle. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So going back to something we talked about earlier with raising children, you say, okay, well, we're gay, so we're not having children. Therefore, we don't really get a say in what gets taught to the children regarding sexuality. It's not your business. So, what do you think and feel about? Uh, let's say, a a gay couple adopting a child, a a very young child. Every child deserves a mom and a dad. So a male and a female parent. So if you are religious, you think it's God amazed. If you are atheist, you think that's the way nature. I mean, there's a reason why men are the Audi and women are the innie. Okay, that's the way, you know, that's the way we were formed. We, their alternative. You know, we're, we're, you know, we, a lot of people want to sort of, you know, elevate us to the preferred sexuality. We don't make any contribution to the, the longevity of humanity on the planet. So, you know, know your place in society, okay? Go off and enjoy what you have. But well, most of us were 
birth by heterosexuals. And I... <laughs> Most of us. Well, you know, there are, you know, what I consider eugenics, you know, lesbians with, you know, their turkey baster and they have a don't, oh, you know, gay see. man donate and all the rest of it. And, mm-hmm. You know, very alternative, you know, where, you know, two women can raise a child and two men. And, and, and this is controversial. I so, mean, you, so you think that a same-sex couple raising a child is doing a disservice or potentially an abuse to that child by not giving them a mother and a father? Not necessarily, because there are so many throwaway children, you know, excuse me, orphan children. So for instance, the age group 12 to 17, the throwaway gays, the kids that parents threw out, you know, because they were gay, or maybe they acted out, or maybe they were, you know, sexually, gay sexually acted very, very early, which is not, not, not uncommon. They are throwaways. And if you know, go on to any adoption website, particularly, you know, even in Arizona, break your heart. These kids with their little video, you know, um, uh, profile, you know, I just want a mum and dad. I mean, oh, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, and it's, it's like going to a puppy mill. It's like the reason I don't go in is because I'd walk out with every freaking stray dog. Yeah. And you look at that and it's like, it is so heartbreaking. So, uh, you know, if I think that priority should be given, to a, a, a male and female couple. Mm. Uh, it doesn't mean they have the exclusive ability to raise them. And I think there's plenty of a male couples and a women couples who, who, who can do that. But I think, you know, for instance, Dave Rubin with the Rubin Report, and I have a huge respect for Dave. And of course, you know, Pete, but I'm gay, the, you know, the transport secretary with, you know, having two children together. You know, we're, you know, we're, we're mimicking heterosexual society and it's like i'm sorry isn't this eugenics i mean you're literally these are designer babies you know you choosing this and you want a male and you want a female and it's like you know there's something really wrong with yeah. this and it you know it's controversial in the same way uh, you know lgb patriots stand on on gay marriage or or abortion you know yeah. gay people are so bought into the the lefty um, agenda that they, they, they don't question it they don't think out of it so when you say that they're like hang on a second no that's no 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 you're wrong and it's like think critically think mm-hmm. designer baby that's a new term that's unfortunate for for those children who are well the, you know the sad the sad thing andy with this as well is this is where we're going when you you know trying to explain where this agenda is coming from and uh my Rainbow Pride is Poison speech includes this. So Christopher F. Rufo um, has some one of the most uh, enlightening, amazing videos exposing this, you know, how the transgender conquered society. I think it, that's the title. And then Jennifer Billick with her 11th hour blog and, you know, the, you know, exposing, following the money. I mean, Je- Jennifer Billick's been doing this for for ages and i think i sent you those links to the videos so it, to try and understand the without sounding starting to sound conspiracy theory and QAnon and all the rest of it in my mind there are three groups pushing this and first of all the third group and probably uh, the one that i'm focusing on are the useful fools that's the rainbow plantation first let's define what this is and this is the LGBTQAI no. plus no, no, no. stuff. No, no, no. Is this the genital mutilation of children? It's it's the whole <clears throat> umbrella. It's so like it includes all. Of it's it. a, so it's transgender ideology. Okay. So that's the easiest term. It's transgender ideology. First of all, transgender is a is a misnomer. It's an oxymoron. You can't trans. Tra, you know, can't change your sex. You can't transition your race. You can't transition your species. So it's a completely made up word. Yeah. So the you know the. Jennifer Billick explains how the tech industry have got into this. Like, and the I think it's the Pritchard family who are billionaires, and one of them is a transsexual, so converted, and they think this is absolutely fabulous. And by the way, there's tons of money to be made. The Christopher Rufo explains the people who are pushing queer theory. And what he doesn't do is go back further enough, which is my rainbow pride of poison. And it gets a little freaky and a little existential, but the simplest way to explain it, the root cause of this, um, where, where the inspiration came from, is Michel Foucault. The Michel Foucault is a late homosexual um, 
born, uh, died of AIDS in the 1980s, French-born, born into an incredibly wealthy family. And you will see this, um, his angst at the, what he called the bourgeoisie. It's such a stale, old-fashioned word. And it was, you know, his angst against the middle classes. As you see, you know, the spoiled American kids so angry at the privilege that they, you know, they've inherited. Michel Foucault was a very unhappy homosexual. And when he finally accepted his homosexuality, it was sadomasochistic. So it was, of the, you know, a fetish, you know, a painful fetish. And for Michel Foucault believed, you know, that he there was this power structure that oppressed racial minorities and sexual minorities. And that power structure, what we would call civil society. So police powers, our governments, uh, our education, you know, everything that we consider, you know, a, a law and order and, and a great place to be in. His belief that if you could destroy that power, if you could upend society, you could build it back better. Okay, or yep. build it back broken, and so and he um, he was published and he rose into academia and he was you know incredible as a philosopher incredibly influential. The people who were most inspired by that wrote critical race theory, wrote queer theory. So that's where it came from. This what's re- this guy's name? Michel Foucault. Michel Foucault. Foucault. Michel Foucault. Yeah, he's French. Born into a rich family. Uh, but one, and yes, and with the same angry angst as a lot of gay people who didn't. And he was, a, he was a philosopher, is that what you said? He was, he was um, a philosopher, and he was published, and he spent many years. So in, his publications, those are the specific writings that critical race theory is derived no, from? No, 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 no. His writings were the inspiration. Okay. So when, you know, Christopher F. Rufo, I, I feel, skips over it, and he's targeting critical race theory the people wrote that and 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 queer theory and the and the the where the transgender comes from is like how could you screw up society the most profound way well then all of a sudden you know you create all these fluid sexualities you know no longer are you know are we binary binary being two in computer terms would be zero one if you were writing code so binary male and female sexuality heterosexual homosexual bisexual that's it but if you can create all these other ones and then you can target the future the target the children, children, then you can. And of course, tie that with the, uh, you know, the internet, tie that with the smartphones. You, you know, you have this, uh, an an amazing ability to spread this virus out to the people. And when you, when you, when you see the damage being done to young people, and when I, at my presentation to uh, Cottonwood about gay erasure. I mean, when when you are no longer innate, you are no longer born in that you know in that sexuality, uh, no longer born in the the correct gendered body, your correct sex body. Then you you know you could uh, you know make anything up you know. Then, but yeah. and you know for us it's you know, and, and of course the cure is well we we can transition you and of course. What basically what they're saying with the gender affirmative care, where there is you know uh, gender affirmative health care, there is no health and it requires permanent care. So who's who's on the tail end of that? Big pharma, big medicine. They're making huge profits from this. So why wouldn't they support that? And you know the and you and you see what I call you know Mengele medical monsters, the people uh, who are pushing this, and it's like. Did we forget the Holocaust? Did yeah. we forget, well, you know, it's, all it's the, violent, you know, it's violent child abuse, and it's also indoctrination and or brainwashing. It's that's, yeah, it's, that's it's, all it's, it is. It's, per, it's permanent child abuse. Yeah. yeah, there's no there's no coming back from it. And then this, you know, and when you you know, with the the frustration for me when you talk to liberal people, the people who are pushing this, the people on school boards, um, the people on you know um, you know uh, parent groups, you know, and uh, who want to be, and I think there's a guilt here. I think, you know, we uh, are guilty of not supporting black civil rights or women's rights or gay civil rights, and we don't want to be on the wrong side. So now the next civil right is tran- transgender, and all of a sudden, yeah. you know, but it's like, but it's fake because we have a hundred years empirical research that gender dysphoria 
is 0.001% affecting mostly feminine boys who usually grow out of it or grow in to be gay men. And all of a sudden, in the last 10 years, it's gone from, you know, four, five thousand percent affecting girls. That's not organic. I mean, anyone with a brain in the head would go, hang on a second. You know, where's the root of this? Where's this coming from? You know, where's the influence? And of course, it's TikTok, it's Instagram, it's social media. And those are I, just, those are the fuels. But what's the source? The source is the people who are pushing it, the tech industry, the, you know, the, the critical race theory, the, the gender, uh, gender theory. Those are the people who are pushing it because they can, re they can remake society. So you, th so you think they have an agenda to remake society because they can or because each group kind of benefits maybe financially I, from I don't, this stuff? I, I don't think I know. Because the research is done out out there, and it you know it's available for you to see if you particularly want to see it. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I mean you know for, uh, gender for Billick, follow the money. That's where she started. I mean you have to wonder, and then you know um, I'm in contact with Joey Bright, uh, who is a, a lefty butch lesbian by her own description in San Francisco. And you know the difference between Joey and I is that you know I, I got on with my life after marching for gay civil rights. Joey never did. You know, jo Joey was always campaigning for, you know, her sisterhood, you know, for for lesbians, for gay people, and and thoroughly enjoyed what was, you know, you know, the the, the lesbian poetry readings, the bookshops, you know, a bit of bit, bit of a uh, you know culture of ultra. And Joey said to me, she said, you know, I can remember in the 1990s Big Pharma sending around these, you know, little twinkies, these suited um, drug reps giving free testosterone to butch lesbians. I mean, it's, li it, you know, it's literally, you know, giving candy to kids or giving, you know, um, you know, for, by a pedophile or, you know, giving drugs to children because, you know, free drugs because, you know, they're going to get hooked. Well, once you start taking testosterone, you know, you're hooked. You know, once you've damaged your body, there's no coming back from that. And, I, you know, Joey has a documentary and it's, the name has changed. And I can't remember what the name was, but, you know, she titles herself a D-sister. There's someone that would maybe have bought into this and just, you know, thank God, you know, she engaged her brain. It was like, no, this, no, this is, this is wrong. But Joey said to me, she said, you know, go and look on Planned Parenthood. Okay. Word search testosterone. Now, Planned Parenthood's uh, entire client base is biological women. So what on earth would testosterone come up in a word search? So I did. Typed in testosterone page after page after page. So, you know, they're, they're, they're on board with it. I think, I think Andy, also it's to uh, understand the emotionless. And that's, you know, that you're either the rational and reason Give me the facts and figures. Show me the evidence. Or you on the left, which is, it's all about emotion. So my parents, have, you know, if I'd come and said, you know, I'm mummy, I'm, I'm, I think I'm a girl, you know, slap, 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 give you a thick ear, get on with it, go and do your homework. The, the, the new ones, you know, they, they hug you and, oh, you know, I'll give you a participation trophy. Oh, let me, you know, let me stroke you and let's talk about your feelings and all the rest of it. And it's all... BS. I mean, we surrendered parenting, and I, maybe that's unfair as a single well, child as male, I have but some, we have. I have something to say about that. I mean, when you say we've surrendered, obviously that's a blanket statement. It doesn't apply to everybody, but mm -hmm. I know what you're saying. I, I know what you mean, and we're, mm -hmm. we as parents are highly pressurized and pressured by things in the public, things online, things in the media to allow our kids to do this stuff. You have states passing laws saying that they can remove your children from you mm -hmm. if you don't go along with th this child saying that they want they're they're supposed to be a different gender. Mm -hmm. So who allowed this and why are they alive still? The one you have uh, one it's crept up on us very, you know, subtly and we weren't paying attention. And I think uh, my criticism of the right, of conservatives, is that you've spent so many decades focused on getting Christian prayer into schools. And it's not other religions, it's Christian prayer. You didn't notice that academia, the teachers, were all buying into this agenda of indoctrinating your children. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, and the criticism is, why aren't you, the Republican Party, 
pushing this, you know, the people that are pushing this or exposing this is Daily Wire, is, you know, it's Matt Walsh, it's Ben yeah. Shapiro, it's, you know, and... and um, so people, people are, I think, two things, busy and or afraid. And the fear comes from these things like going out, going to your child's school to speak at a school board meeting and being labeled a terrorist. Yeah, in fa- you know, in fairness, the whole point of having this amazing, successful experiment that is our republic you're not supposed to you know focus on a you know a, a grievances and in victimhood you're supposed to enjoy you know our, our our roman empire you know we're supposed to you know go to church and if you if you will you know um you know pick your take your kids to soccer you know you know watch your movies play your sports you're supposed to enjoy our yeah. successes. So on that part of it, it's great. But just FYI, you know, you have to be vigilant because the barbarians, they're not at the gate. The barbarians are in. And that Trojan horse for the Republican Party is log cabin Republicans. Hmm. So they're already in. And if you go and look at the gay Christian conservatives, who, by the way, according to Richard Grinnell, are on the forefront of fighting transgender ideology. And it's like, well, that's interesting because we are three chapters in Arizona, and I've never seen one log cabin Republican not only make a statement against it. I didn't see them at Camp Verde. I didn't see them at Cottonwood. I didn't see them at Prescott. I didn't see them at Payson. I didn't see them at Phoenix. So where are you? Because you're not. And the truth of it, you look at their their website, their LGBT. Well, mm-hmm. T doesn't stand for tea time. Okay, it stands for gender gender ideology and when and i you know i was involved briefly with log cabin uh, republican phoenix which was a new chapter a few years ago and you know it, it really was part of the forming of the 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 reason and why of lgp patriots because i was in a political diaspora gay political diaspora i'm not you know i came out on the left but they've completely become lunatics LGB Alliance was the you know the breakaway, which is really you know they dropped the rainbow flag, but it was lesbian centric. There was an amazing you know Bev Jackson, Kate Harris, amazing lesbians. You know Bev Jackson was a nineteen year old, nineteen seventy, standing up for gay civil rights. So she, you know she's paid her dues, and they were like, what is this you know intrusion of, of, of you know men in, um, and but you know Bev Jackson called me from London, because I, I put my name forward, I was interested in helping them with LGB Alliance USA. I mean, and, you know, it was a 44 area code, and I didn't recognize, I didn't pick up, so she called again, and I picked up. We had a wonderful conversation. And and then she said, then she said, you know, uh, we really have to make sure we get Democrats elected. And I there were long pause, and I said, Bev, why would you support the party of Sharia law? And the long pause, and then she started questioning, you know, you know, race in Africa. I'm a privileged white male, and like she did this lefty litmus test. I didn't qualify, so she never called me back. So that was out. And also, when I went onto the forums, there was all these hysterical homos on there. You know, if you said anything, you know, they they criticized you or they canceled you or you you know they they deleted your articles. You know, people so, that aren't thinking normally or critically or logically about anything, they're. Then they're not, but to ready to be upset. Going back to the postcard that I gave you, the LGBT spectrum. So log cabin Republicans felt like it was, you know, maybe that is my home. And I went, and first of all, I'm, you know, I'm a red pill liberal. I'm not conservative. I'm often accused of being conservative, but frankly, hard right conservative. And you know, I uh, met Justin Borman, who was was on the board, maybe still on the board. He ran the Trump victory campaign in 2020, which was the Trump, you know, losing campaign, quite frankly. Stephen uh. Richter, Richard was the only person, and, and Rhino, that we got elected. But, he, you know, so I got involved, and the, the, the difference between talking to the left and, and log cabin Republicans that they were incredibly polite. They were, they were really interested in your point of view, and they would thank you. But then they asked me to do social media. So I started doing the social media, and it was LGB, LGB. And then I started getting criticism. You cannot say LGB. You have to say LGBT. And I'm like, well, first of all, I'm not a transsexual, and I'm not this you know, oxymoron transgender. And they were like, we take our dictate from D.C., and that's it. So 
I, I walked away and it was like, I'm, you know, I can't be involved. And, you know, the, 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 rele- the, the how you see how bad they are was Richard Grinnell pushing uh, President Trump. And I think, quite frankly, I think whispered rainbow pride poison in his ear. And he's, uh, Richard Grinnell is probably one of the smartest people on, on President Trump's old cabinet. And, uh, but doesn't understand the difference between a homosexual and a transsexual. So he's on the Trump campaign. Uh, Governor DeSantis, you know, is not. You know, he, he's not supporting any of this nonsense. He was never fooled by any of this. So Scott Moorfield is on the DeSantis camp. And he's, you know, written for Town Hall, and he's written for Blaze, he's written for Breitbart. So he had a tweet, and he was criticizing transgender ideology. So Richard Grinnell responded and said, you've crossed the line. That's homophobic. And Scott Moorfield came back and went in, you know, confusion. What are you talking about? I'm criticizing transgender ideology. And Grinnell came back and went, you, again, it's a bridge too far. You, and I've, I've screen capped those, you know. It, and I was like, how do you, after all these years with all your smarts, not, I don't understand what a difference between a homosexual and a transsexual is. And the truth of it, they bought into this. And, uh, you know, when I, you, going back to the majority, I think they've all bought into this. And, you know, they, and I, I had the, a conversation with someone that I know on Twitter who flew into Phoenix last Friday, had a five hours, a five hour layover. So, you know, you know, met for brunch, we drove drove him around, off he went, had a conversation, and he was a recent red pilling, walked away, and, you know, conservative, and he's in Texas, and he was with a, you know, gay group called Stonewall, you know, original title, of course, and <laughs> he said, you know, he got into arguments, and he said, you know, every time they discussed it, he said he was the only person in the room he was saying, hang on a second, what, what is this trans, you know, what is this transsexual, you know, what is this, you know, drag queen, So is, all trans, ages? is transgender the same as transsexual? No, of course it isn't. What's you know, the difference? Tra- well, transgender is an oxymoron. It's a completely fabricated word. You know, what they've done is they, they've taken, they've ignored sex. And, you know, this you know, nice, comfortable word called gender. You know, if you could turn it into gender, then you can make up everything else because you, you, yeah. you can't make up the sex. A transsexual is someone who's had the surgery, someone who, you know, okay. who thinks they've, okay, they've so transitioned. That's... But they haven't transitioned because you can't transition. You know, your body, you so... know, what your mind thinks, your body knows. You know, mind has a fantasy. Your body knows facts. Okay. So the proper term for somebody who has removed one set of genitalia and maybe put on another one would be transsexual not transgender yeah and you know when someone says to you um you know (laughs) argues for transgender be quiet and say to them what's a transgender and watch them fail because they're reading from a script they've not even thought about it and you know it's you know i mean i had a lunch with a a very dear friend who's a fellow realtor she we've done three you know my personal transactions with her and she, and I watched in the 12 years that I've lived in Phoenix her daughter go from this little girl to this you know blossoming beautiful teenager she said you know we had lunch and she said oh by the way my daughter identifies as a lesbian and I said well she's either a lesbian or she's not you can't identify I mean gay isn't cosplay you can't try it on for size for goodness sake and I was like where's this coming <laughs> from and she said well you know all her peers are experimenting and I'm like, okay, first of all, you take her away from the peers, you step in there, and because the next thing she's going to be saying, I, mommy, I may be transgender. And, you know, who's the beneficiary of that? First of all, all the emotionists, because they think they're fixing something. And then the rest of it, you know, the ulterior motive is the tech industry who wants to eradicate women, wants to eradicate men. We want to take birthing out of the, the womb. We're going to put it into a factory. We're going to create these, you know, new um, transhumanists. Yeah. And, 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 of course, the emotionalists who want to make up for, you know, well, I, I didn't support gay marriage. And I, before that, I really didn't like homosexuals. So now I'm going to bring my children to an all-ages drag queen and have, you know, the, the propaganda pumped into my child to make up for my guilt. I mean, you see it with what I call the Munchausen moms, like, you know, the, the Jazz Jennings mom, where you see this, what was an effeminate boy and, and uh 
you know, the mother decided, I'm going to transition and, and then put it on a TV show. It's basically, she castrated her son. And there's this wonderful exposed clip where she's chatting with her girlfriends. And she said, you know, damn jazz. Uh, she's not dilating. Now, to understand that, when you cut off or you invert your, the, your male genitalia into a hole created by a surgeon, your body knows it's a wound. So your body spends the rest of your life trying to heal the wound. How do you stop that? You you dilate. You put in this fake phallus, a dildo, and you force it in there. Well, Jazz, being a teenage boy, you know, a, a eunuch, um, you know, d- doesn't want to do it. You know, can't be bothered. And the mother's comment was, you know, I just want to, you know, put lube and then ram it up her. And I'm linking, you're a monster. You're a Mengler medical monster you're a munchausen mom and this is all about you and by the way and of course when you see jazz now she's become obese she's unhappy and now she's figuring out she so, like two questions yeah one of them is just for the sake of the questioning if somebody is a pedophile mm-hmm. and they molest a child and then they go to prison for whatever and the prison the people in prison find out that they're a child molester what happens to them most of the time they uh, get they get fucked up they get beat yeah. or they get stabbed and killed mm-hmm. because they they touched a child inappropriately. So where are you going with this? Andy? So I'll t- I'll tell you my next my next question. So naturally, if um if a parent abuses a child in a different way, just beats the crap out of them, they're an abusive parent, whatever, alcoholic, doesn't matter. What happens to that parent if they get caught? I will say to you, if the Republicans don't hold the line on this, if we don't end up having new Nuremberg trials for crime against humanity, we will never re- rescue humanity. So you see where uh, I'm going. Oh, so, so what I, happens yeah. to that? So what happens to that parent or those parents that beat their children is that they get put away for child abuse. Mm-hmm. They get put in prison for multiple years for mm-hmm. child abuse, or they don't get to see their child, some combination of that. But then you have these people, these parents who are forcing their children to mm-hmm. eat things that are counterproductive to their biology and castrating them or <laughs> so where any so number where of so where is the authority with, with no that, repercussions yeah, that where is the authority that's standing out for that well we don't have it because we have so many blue cities and so many blue you know uh, you know um, prosecutors well, who the, have the, bought into this those with authority to make this right are sitting at home waiting for the opportunity because it's been so politicized that if anybody does something and stands up against these people or takes violent action against an adult who has taken violent abusive action toward their child you know they're going to get hung up they're going to go to prison so violence is never the answer i disagree yeah you're entitled yeah Uh, i mean i'm glad we can you know but you know first of all it, it, it it it's it won't have legs you know, you have to do it with rationale and reason. That's the problem, yeah. Yeah, and but it's, you need to have the courage. You need to be able to stand out, as I am doing. And it's not fun, and it's expensive. Yeah. And it just, it, you know, it, it's isolating. And I'm waiting, uh, and your podcast will help with this, for them to discover me and come after me, as they've done with so many other yeah. people. <laughs> but, it, you know, it's a point where we have to stand up and go, no, this isn't acceptable. Yeah. And, and it, you know, going back to who the people that are, are exposing this, it's not the Republicans. And why isn't it the Republicans? Because, you know, for, well, first of all, it's, you know, homosexuality and all of this is not their realm of knowledge and it's not their comfort zone. So they're not, they're not seeing it, but they're also turning a blind eye. So, you know, it's, area four, not wanting me to, you know, no one homosexual to come and speak to them because they don't want to see it yeah. on the left. It's, it's not worth acknowledging. Until it's in their face, which it's starting to be coming after I children. I mean, Andy, what, how did I get into this six years ago? I mean, I have been trying to warn Republicans and candidates. And I know a lot in Maricopa County. I've had almost no um, tra- traction in Maricopa. I have tons in Yavapine. Thank you, Jenna Kading, Lucy Rayner Wheat, and Gary Bowers. Uh, you know, executive committee, but you know they. It, it's a. Uh, the, I think the Republicans. There, you call them rhinos, call them established, call them status quo. Get along to get along. What have you? They're very comfortable with their little meetings and their little groups and having that conversation. And 
and you know, Mark Nelson kept saying, oh, you, when, you, when I was pushing this, I want to warn the candidates. Well, you mean the gay thing? And I, I wanted to slap Mark so hard. Mark, it's not the gay thing. It's your kid's thing. It's your grandkid's thing. That's what this is about. But, uh, you know, so you know, they're, they're not comfortable having that conversation. What I wanted to say to uh, candidates, they're going to ask you, do you support LGBTQ civil rights? And the answer is, I support all civil rights for all Americans, not special rights. And that's the difference. It's an easy answer. But they stumble on it all the time. And you have, you know, I, we, I was privileged enough to be invited to have a, you know, a roundtable with the executive committee in Yavapai to discuss door knocking, reaching out to independents, which is very smart. It's a, you know, the largest growing group and, you know, not counting just on Republican vote. We, we need to win. And Steve Zipperman, who's running for Senate, uh, you know, attended and I'd never met Steve and uh, he was going on and he just come from Sedona and he was with this patriot group and he was, so, you know, he's a constitutional conservative and he was absolutely thrilled with the reception that he got there. And, uh, and I thought, oh, OK, great. I mean, I listened to John Fillmore, the Arizona Patriot Party, he's constitutional conservative, no issue with anything that John says. And then in the conversation, Steve says, and I have this transgender who wants to be involved in my campaign. And she, and I said, you mean he? And he said, no, 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 she, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced. And this is a conservative. Said, Steve Zipperman said yeah. this? Yeah. And I was like, hang on a second. And it, it, it went south very quickly. And then finally, Jana and Lucy, okay, cut this off, you know, what have you. And it's like, so you already agree to compel pronouns. You know that's not. Uh, a, a, a woman, you know that's a man, and don't pretend to be a patriot and a, con a constitutional conservative and support this because you've already taken an E to, you know, transgender ideology. So, yeah. you know, I'm sorry. And of course, now I find out that he's spending a lot of time working behind trying to push me out, you know, um, you know, uh, not to allow the executive committee to invite me or work with me and all the rest of it. And it's like, okay, well, we've exposed you. You're a fraud. You, you know, you have clay feet and we know exactly where you are. And so it's, you know, uh, you, it's trying to explain to them in simple terms, which was, which is the presentation of Rainbow Pride is Poison, without it sounding like it's ex existential nonsense, like this is where it came from. Here are your tools to fight back. You know, here, you know, here are the, the, the buzzwords, you know, Sex is binary, male and female, three sexualities, male, you know, heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual. That's it. Stick with what you know. Don't get involved in this, you know, acid drop, you know, addicts, you know, um, LSD trip that they're going down. Don't buy into it. You know, don't lose your common sense. No, oh, that's funny you say LSD trip. I figured that an LSD <laughs> trip would reveal the truth to them. But apparently, <laughs> you know, they, it's, it's too you know, foggy. It's, it's sort of a, you know, a, a magical, uh, you know, wonderland. Not that I've ever done it. But, you know, going back to the kids and targeting kids. I mean, kids live in a very magical world and, yeah. and you know, very suggestive. And we also know that kids uh, are very easily imprinted, ju yep. in, just like in nature. So if a kid has been traumatized they will carry that through their life um you know i can think of uh, things that happened in my life that you know are, are stamped on my memory stamped on my psyche psyche not necessarily negative but i remember them so you know the agenda if you target someone like desmond is amazing you know and you say to them and you know kids when it's sparkly and showy and colorful and yeah. dancing and what you know yeah. performative they don't see the danger why would they because they, they you know they are sponges yeah they and, just see the colors and yeah the, the, and the sparkles so, you know as i said in all my speech you know you have to question what are a group of childless homosexual men have any business performing to children, reading to children. Childless homosexual men. Childless homosexual men, this is what they are. And it's like, you know, stay in your lane. You know, yeah. no one cares what you do in the privacy of your home. They care when you bring it on the street. They yeah. care when you, when you have what, you know, you're demanding the right to public nudity, the well, right to public king, the right to public sex, which is what they're doing. And when you say about the percentage, most of the, the gay rainbow people buy into this because, uh, you know, in my mind, the gay liberation very quickly became 
gay male sexual pleasure liberation. And I'll, mm. gi I'll give you a contrast. You know, if we um, were, you know, formed as a group, if we had, you know, if all homosexuals were a committee and we chose a public relations company to promote us in society so that we weren't seen as, you know, as, as a problem, uh, why would you pick the lowest common denominator? Why would you pick the perverts and the kink people and the sex addicts and the drug addicts and the alcoholics and the drag queens? It doesn't make any sense. So what, you know, th let's consider another really persecuted marginal group, Jews. I mean, you can read so much about Jews, uh, you know, their contribution to literature, their contribution to science, um, you know, contribution to technology, arts, you know, all the rest of it, Yiddish humor, for goodness sake. Uh, you know, they put their best foot forward. What are we doing? We, you know, we want to show you we're in the pigsty. We are, this is, we feel so low about ourselves that we that we're happy to be you know uh, uh, promoted and represented by the lowest common denominator right. and and hopefully for LGB patriots the separation and there there really is a gay divorce you see um, you know with symbols LGB a pair of scissors cutting off the TQ and all the rest of it because you know that that was you know that was a virus we picked up and it's like you know what we're having nothing to do with you guys hmm. and i think the saddest thing andy is and it, and it's sort of funny that i think the male game male pushback is going to be the the trans intrusion on their dating apps and their and their male um uh, adult male yeah. stuff and the reason why is when you know when you talk you listen to guys and they're on grinder you know one of these you know it's a hookup app and they seen uh dudes on there with beards and they look masculine sort of a pretty face maybe their eyes are a little pretty and they're like oh this is a great and then you find out it's a biological woman that's you know science and chemicals have changed and they go you know and the guy's got a vagina yeah. or the he has a piece of a slice of his thigh or his forearm formed into a fake phallus. Now, no. and you know, and I and I'm going to be vulgar as a cock connoisseur after all these years. That's not a that's not a penis, right? And 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 then for lesbians, they on the lesbian <laughs> dating apps. If you say um, in your bio, uh, I am only attracted to biological women, they kick you off, and it's like this is an all you know lesbian dating side and you know the rainbow people are kicking you off so you know i think at that point the gay men are going to go you know what we're done we're done with you invading our pornography you're done with yeah. you invading our dating and you know unfortunately that's, well, that's the lowest of it but i think that's going to be the the turning point for them that's going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back yeah that's diversity equity and inclusion for you you got the the trans ideology screwing it up for everybody so why the would regular you, the why, everyday gays and the the rest of us where, where was it acceptable you know to include perverts but any, you know well, and kink any, and all the rest of that nobody wants any ideology forced down any like forced forced on them nobody wants like i don't want the mormons to come to my door and say hey this is the right way you're doing it wrong as a christian people don't want me to come over and say hey uh this is what i believe you're doing it wrong I don't want any trans people saying, hey, you guys have to do this now or else you're, you know, uh, bigots or whatever it may be. So I think far too much but people Andy, have become but, complacent but, and but, haven't given this the attention that it's due. And now we're suffering the consequences of not seeing ahead of time what, what this could have become. So now it's in our face and we have to deal with it. It's not it could have become. It's yeah. It's way beyond. Right. It's yeah. Right. I because mean, back it's, it's it's all our institutes. I mean, Lock Haven Republicans is the forty plus year old gay representative Christian conservatives, right. and they're they're on board. the The Democratic Party's on board. Our president of the United States uh, is on board, and you're inviting a a a, a trans freak, a fa you know, a failed male, basically yeah. silly dilly. Mulvaney is a failed male and you know supporting gender affirming health care it's like you're castrating boys and you're sterilizing girls how is this affirming it isn't affirming any you know the thing that I find so interesting with the left is that when you naively and I've done this think you know they just don't know they let me explain it to them so Sarah LaCurie was uh, a Arizona representative delightful woman smart 
great husband, two charming little boys. And I met her at a Slope Fest two years ago, a community festival in, in Phoenix. So she took Aaron Lieberman's seat when he mistakenly ran for governor, Democrat, got primary doubt. And then she got primary doubt. So before, once she was running for, uh, legitimately, all the candidates come around and they kiss baby and shake hands, what have you. And she came up to me with, you know, my, my block watch. She was, you know, LGBT. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I am LGB. And, I, and she listened. And I was very impressed with it. And after she uh, lost the race and was looking for a job and we communicated and I did send her some of the stuff on my email blast. And we finally got the date that we had been promised and, you know, meet at a coffee shop an hour long. And it ended with her standing up, giving me a hug and saying, you know, you were really passionate about, you know, exposing this. And that was it. A year later, I saw her at the same community festival. I was arm's length from her, called her name and half a dozen times. She wouldn't look at me. And, and I was like, what changed? And what I found when you... Uh, expose what's going on when you show them the what look like autopsy photographs of what they're doing to these children's genitals they get angry not at what's been done to kids they get angry at you the messenger for showing them and I've, I've, I've even had people on Facebook and you know my you know my professional Facebook I shouldn't have done it but someone that I know locally an artist and she was you know supporting gay pride and trans and I'm like so I messaged her and I was like just FYI let me give you some information so we went back and forth and she asked for the information she you know asked me questions and of course as you know you go down this road and you finally show them the photographs and she came back stop sending me the stuff and I'm like okay you, yeah. So, you know, they don't want the truth. They really yeah. don't. Because they, you know, it, but Andy understands something, you know, and it's the same for the, the emotionless left and, or the rainbow plantation people. If that's your tribe, if that's your family, if that's where you, that's your familiar zone, where you spent all your time, do you run away with that one nail that stands up? I mean, I, I think you, here's an old analogy the emperor's new clothes. So we know the fable that, you know, the poor tailor had to come up with some fabulous magical cloth and the emperor was never satisfied. So he came up with a solution. He has this invisible cloth, okay? He knows it's a fabric and he says to the, uh, the, the emperor, here's this amazing invisible cloth. He didn't say invisible. Here's this cloth. If you are not worthy of your status, you will not be able to see it. So, of course, the emperor pretends he sees this cloth and so... The tailor pretends he makes a cloth. And of course, everyone knows that if you are not worthy of his status, you will not see it. So emperor walks down the street stark naked and he has this child that has no status and, 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 and not concerned about status, laughs and goes, the emperor's naked. And suddenly it all breaks down. That's transgender ideology. I mean, we've, you know, so many people are bought into this fabrication, this falsehood for emotionalism. And the, the and they are useful fools. The Rainbow Pride Plantation people are useful fools. They're useful tools for this agenda. At some point, you know, as I said in you know my speech, Cottonwood, it's been a ten-year-long April Fool's joke. Yeah. And you've all been had. You know, at some point we're going to wake up and go, what the? How do we recover? And you know, it, it, we have lost generations of children that will be infertile, that will be patients for life, who are going to go have, you know, hysterectomies in their 20s. What, how is any part of humanity to think that's okay? Yeah. yeah. And you think this is coming from people? It, it's, well, it's, again, it's coming from an agenda of people who want to uh, destroy Western society. They mm -hmm. want to, you know, so the, the easy out for Christians is say, well, it's satanic. And it's like, you know, I, I'm sorry, that's just, you know, you've never seen Satan. You know, it's, it's in your head, it's mystical. You Show me the evidence, show me the facts. And, and the fact is, it's the, you know, and people also say, well, it's communism and it's Marxism. The nearest thing it could be is anarchy but it isn't michel foucault going back to foucault you know he, mm. he you know he dabbled with communism and rejected it so it isn't it's about 
you know, it's destroying the power structure. And that power structure yeah. in Western society is where everything, well, su- all our successes, how do you destroy that? It's too calculated to be anarchy. Uh, calculated on on the, f- the, the money-making part, yes. I mean, you have to question, why does a doctor or a medical person who's sworn a Hippocratic Oath to do no harm buy into this? And, of course, Daily Wires exposed that with... Uh, Vanderbilt University in Tennessee, and then you, here you have this v- undercover video of this uh, this um, medical person telling these new doctors how much money they can make with you know uh, phalloplasty and vaginoplasty, whatever the term is, and and you know all these surgeries. And thinking you know that's just you know understand they're going to be a patient for life. You know it's this new market. You know male and female is very boring. There's not a new market if you do that. And then then the next video is HR, and she's saying to these people, if you have a a religious or conscientious objection, it's problematic. You can't work here. Well, any sane human being will go. That sounds like okay. discrimination. Way well, is it discrimination? Um, it's certainly been bullied. You've certainly been bullied to get on this agenda. Um, yeah. You know this jihadi agenda. So yeah, I mean, it just it is so upside down. And as you see, you recognize with the left that, you know, up is down and one and one is five. And, you know, <laughs> you know, they, you know, water is dry and, you know, everything. And so, yeah, I mean, they want this upside down world and we it's happening. And you see it with yeah. the failing of the blue states and, you know, the, the immigrant crisis. And then you see the and it's like watching the bratty child of the Democrats that you keep saying, don't touch the hot stove top, you're going to burn. And that child touches it. It's like, okay, so you're one of those, you know, bratty kids that's got to learn from experience. And the Democrats are doing that. And I think our failing is education. We don't teach, so, uh, you know, so, uh, so, uh, civics anymore we don't teach history we don't teach the holocaust we don't teach communism so you when you question these kids i mean you have kids and you see um uh, is it mark dice or matthew dice that goes with the microphone and of course he goes to the stupidest people in la on venice beach and you know what are we celebrating fourth of july you know which country you know, independent. You know, which country was the Queen of England from? You know, and they can't answer these questions. Yeah. Show you a picture of Joe Biden. Who's that? <laughs> no idea. Yeah. So you know, we failed with our education, and you see with the collapse of society with you know defund the police, Black Lives Matter, which is nothing but a, a racist shakedown mafia, and you and they're getting what they want. Unfortunately. We're going to have to pick up the pieces. And you know, thankfully, you see like the mayor of New York going, hang on a second, we can't afford this. And, you know, I think it was the Chicago, it was not the Chicago mayor, I can't think uh, where it is, maybe it was San, uh, San Francisco, where she's, you know, she's saying things that the Republicans were saying to her when she was running. Yeah. And she's finally go, well, you know, I, I got rent pilled. You know, we, they've turned San Francisco into this little gem, into a shithole, as t- President Trump would say. And it is. Hmm. Yeah. Going back to uh, Michel Foucault, I think is mm-hmm. how you said it. Mm-hmm. So Michel Foucault wrote something. He had book, had... books on sexuality. He wrote lots of essays. So he's very, okay. very well published. Okay. And so those are the, those his writings are the things that inspired, you said, mm-hmm. critical race theory. Yeah. Is that also and, what and inspired queer, queer, queer theory? Yeah. And okay. queer was theory. there one more that it inspired? Um, I've not, I've not done that research. Okay. Which chances are, you know, Christopher F. Rufo, who works for with Ron DeSantis, uh, I think he's the education secretary or something. I'm, I'm probably getting his title totally wrong. Um, he has done that research, and he is someone you've got to follow his Substack. You've got to, you know, uh, subscribe and 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 watch his videos. But you've got to be prepared to spend the time to right. watch it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and understand it. So, as far as critical race theory, do you know was that written by one person? Uh, I think it was. Okay, I think it was. Yeah. I'll have to look into that more. Mm-hmm.